Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to A-Dial Pharmaceuticals, a channel, Medicines for Addiction. And joining to give us a high-level overview of the lead candidates, we're going to talk about some milestone expectations and so much more. We have Carrie, the CEO, joining us. First and foremost, welcome, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Kyle. Yeah, such a pleasure to get you on. Uh, you guys are playing in a fascinating uh, you know, pharmaceutical space, but for newer audiences, maybe give us a high-level overview of your lead candidate, AD04, uh, in your pipeline for alcohol use disorder. Sure. So as you mentioned, AD04 is our lead drug candidate. It's for alcohol use disorder, which is a huge public health need. It's unmet. It's estimated that over 30 million people in the U.S. alone are affected by alcohol use disorder. And the really surprising thing about that is of that 30 million people that are estimated to be suffering from alcohol use disorder, only about 7% are seeking any kind of treatment for alcohol use disorder. And of that 7%, most of those are not seeking any kind of medical treatment. So it's a huge unmet need, and there are medical treatments available on the market, although the last one approved was in 2006. So think about that, almost 20 years with really no new medications available to treat, the, treat that disease. So because of that, that's one of the reasons very few people are actually seeking the medical treatment. There are so, several uh, drugs on the market, about four, uh, for treating alcohol use disorder, but they all have some significant issues with them, which is one of the reasons why there are very few people using them. You know, our approach is different. ADO4 is a genetically targeted drug to treat alcohol use disorder. So it's not for everyone, but for patients that have certain genotypes, our data has shown that our drug has, can be very effective in helping those patients drink less. And that's one of the reasons we think we bring a new approach to treating, treating alcohol use disorder uh, by um, labeling it to ac actually help the patient drink less. All the drugs that are approved up to this point require patients to stop drinking uh, before they can start the drug. So they, they have to maintain abstinence, and that's what those drugs were intended to be. And we find that that doesn't work for a lot of people long term. They really, the real danger is really done when patients are drinking at that heavy level. And the goal is to really get them down from a heavy drinking level to a more moderate level of drinking. And that's what our drug is designed to do. Yeah, definitely appreciate the insight there. And what should investors kind of focus on from a milestone standpoint? I mean, you recently received a positive response from the FDA meeting uh, regarding proposed in vitro bridging strategy for ADO4. Maybe tell us what that means and what's kind of going on moving forward. Yeah, so our, our regulatory strategy for ADO4 is to use what's called a 505B pathway, which means the drug is a repurposed drug of a drug called ondansetron that's been on the market for over 30 years at higher doses to treat nausea and vomiting associated with chemotherapy. So by this, using the pathway we're using, we, we're able to rely on all that safety data that's already out there. But you have to do what's called a bridging study to compare how our drug at a much lower dose behaves in the body um, compared to the drug that's been on the market at those higher doses. So we, we completed that study. We saw no surprises. It did exactly what we were expecting it to do uh, from a bioavailability standpoint, you know, how it works with food or without food for the patient, uh, how the dose at our much lower dose worked in proportion to the higher dose. So all that was positive. We went to FDA. We got very favorable feedback from them. So the next step is that we now have the green light really to start manufacturing the drug for our upcoming phase three program, which is the, is the uh, next stage in our, you know, our goal to commercialize this drug. Yeah. And speaking on the commercial, uh, commercialization front there, uh, when it comes to like the addressable markets you guys are chasing after, is this mostly just uh, in America right now? Do you want to talk about perhaps how you're just kind of standing out from the competition there? Yeah. So our primary focus is the U.S. Uh, as I said, that's a huge market, um, 30 million in the U.S. alone. But globally, it's a, AUD is a huge problem. It's actually even a bigger problem in Europe. So longer term, uh, we think we could also penetrate the European market. But our first focus is on on the US, that's where we're based, that's where um, the company's based and where we, we see the, the biggest market opportunity in near term. And as I said, the, from a competition standpoint, we think we stack up very well against the drugs that are already on the market because again, they require abstinence, they have pretty high side effects. We actually saw very low side effects in, in our trials. And you know, if you think about treating someone with medication, side effects can, can be a huge reason why people stop 
using their, uh, their drugs because they can't tolerate the side effects. So we stack up very well there. Um, again, it's genetically targeted. So the doctors love the fact that um, not, it's not for everyone. So it's more precision medicine. And that's really where medications are moving toward, uh, you know, being really targeted for, for specific patients where we show data, it should work for those patients. It's the only drug we're aware of that approaches AUD that way. So we, we think we stack up very well against all the competition on the market um, with low, lower side effects and, again, a precision treatment and designed to reduce drinking, not require someone to stop drinking uh, entirely. On that note, uh, I definitely appreciate all the insights today as we pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think and consider subscribing as News Catalyst comes down the wire like this, of course. We'll bring it to you here. But on the note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.